Hey, this is Anthony with RevZilla TV, and welcome to our first look of the brand new for fall 2011 Climb Badlands Pro Jacket and Pant Combo. You might be saying, wow, this is quite the early look at a garment that's not going to make it out till the fall. That is correct. We were, it was unveiled this year at Indy. We want to get a first look out to the airwaves. There's a lot of things on this jacket that are very much 99 to 100% finished or finalized. And even though this is a prototype, some of the logo placement may change or some other subtleties might change. We wanted to show it to the public so they know what is coming down the pipe from Climb for the next round towards the riding community. Basically how they've positioned this. There was a lot of riders that were hardcore off-road riders that said, we love the adventure rally, but it's just too much jacket. We don't need some of the super heavy talisman fabrics that were super fabric. We don't need a rally style adventure jack backpack built into the jacket. Is there any way that we could have an outfit that would be almost as technical, but provide really a component-based system, which you have to remember all climb is component-based. They make their own mid-layers, they make their own base layers, but really what you're investing here is a technical shell, and it's gonna be positioned less than the Adventure Rally. And like I said, no backpack on this one, and some of the other things that made it really crunchy, when you talk about that, that uh, the Adventure Rally, were left out of this to make it more wearable for mostly off-road riding, but crossing over into the on-road world as well. Now, if you look at it, this is the, the silver, gray version of it. There's also going to be a black version. The fit of it is slightly more tapered. It's really going to fit akin to the Adventure Rally for the 2011. So what that means is they've tightened up the shoulder boxes a little bit. It's slightly more tapered, but really it's still an enduro fit. So with the armor out of this guy, you're going to be able to fit a compression suit underneath. Now I have Freddie next to me. Freddie's enormous. Freddie's six foot five. I am five foot nine for reference. Freddie's wearing a size large. He has a 44 inch chest and he is 200 pounds. Now here's another frame of reference to really confuse you when you start to get into the sizing. I am five foot nine. I'm about 180. I have a broad shoulders. My chest fits into this jacket, but the length is a little bit much for me. But a medium is going to be too small on me on this guy. So even though Freddie's dramatically taller than me, note the arm length on this guy. He's 6'5 and it fits him well. And in the pants, he's wearing a 34, and typically Freddie wears a 36-36 36, 36 or 34-36 36, uh, pants. But again, notice the roominess. It's an off-road style coat. So let's get into some of the protection elements, walk through some of the application elements, and then get into the features and the nitty-gritty of this guy. I did say it's an all-weather technical shell. The base layers for the cold times of year are up to you. Whether whether it's climb base layers or you have some other things or you have some heated gear on your own. They like to allow someone to buy a technical shell, invest in that shell, and then really it's up to the rider. So where some other brands might be off the jacket or off the hanger ready, if you're going into the cold weather, you're going to have to think about what you're going to wear underneath this guy. For the summertime, it makes sense. Let's just jump right into the venting scheme here. We have a lot of options here to keep you cool. So what we're going to have is a handful of vents. I believe there's eight. So you have vents on the tops of the shoulders. You're going to have vents down here at the bottom of the sleeves. Put your arm up for me. We have a monster water resistant zipper pit vent down here. And again, this shell is a Gore-Tex shell. It's the Gore-Tex Pro shell, which is on-road tested. So it's the highest degree of waterproof guaranteed by Gore-Tex with this shell material. Turn backwards for me, Freddie. And that's going to be guaranteed for life waterproof on this jacket. Everything's seam sealed. It's safety stitched. This is a, a hardcore adventure um, exploration jacket. So if I go to these last two vents here, you're going to have two vertical vents on the back that are going to come down and they're going to vent right to the mesh liner of this guy. So a ton of ventilation in the warmer times of the year. Turn back around for me, Freddie. And notice, I want to point out one key thing. You also have good ventilation down here at the wrist. And the reason why that's so important is they've actually included a non-removable nylon storm cuff system. So if there was, it becomes a little bit cooler, harder to stay cool in this guy if that vent's not there. But even in the summertime with a short cuff glove, you're going to fold that guy back over and you'll be able to vent down here as well. Now in the wintertime, it's a welcomed addition because it's going to keep that air from going up. But again, what you wear in the base layer is up to you. In the summertime, you just open up the amount of venting and you're good to go. Let's talk about protect protection. Basically, the main construction of this garment is going to be three main fabrics. You're going to have Gore Armacore come in really tight. Gore Armacore is going to be the marriage of 700 D Cordura Kevlar with a third ply that's going to be the Gore-Tex backing behind it. So you have a three, it's a three layer system and it's also going to be ripstop. It's a very high denier. Kevlar and Cordura together make an even beefier garment. You're going to see that in main construction areas. They're going to be ripstop as well as the impact areas like on the backs of the arms and the elbow, as well as the knees, as well as the seat. The other fabrics on this guy, the softer fabric, is it's still heavy duty, but it's called SPL 600. It's a 600 denier, denier Cordura. It's in areas that are away from impact areas and seams. And really what it does is it allows the jacket to be a little bit more lightweight, knowing that you're going to be pretty active in it. Turn around backwards for me one more time, Freddie. 
Now, if you come in on the back here, this is a really nice touch. This is the first time we're seeing this, this garment in any of these new items here for 2011. This is Stretch Gore-Tex, which is a completely waterproof, breathable membrane bonded to a stretch fabric material that has a light rip stop to it as well. So again, they have this in the shoulder blade areas. You're also going to have it on the inside of the legs as well as a seat. So Stretch Gore-Tex is really your third, the third head of your, your uh, material Cerberus that you have going on here with the three-headed beast. Turn back around for me. Let's walk through some of the other features, some of the other nuances they put into this coat. I'm going to start here up at the top. So you have your comfort line collar. It's a tricot lining. It's going to be very soft. It's going to be wicking, and it's going to be comfortable to get your skin. Notice a fleece zipper to garage. Micro Velcro here so it doesn't bite your helmet, it doesn't bite your neck. This is something we're seeing from all high-end manufacturers coming out with. YKK zippers down the front. Everything's YKK with the Climb proprietary zipper pulls on these guys. Now as I start to open this guy up, another nice feature that you're going to see is that this guy is built so that there's no reverse hook and loop, but what you are going to have is the ability to bring this guy open here. Turn like that for me. And what you're going to see is in the hotter times of the year, you're going to be able to open this guy. And you also have loops here for your iPod speakers to go up. Coming down, let's talk about armor a little bit. So we've talked about protection on the outer shell. Let's talk about protection on the guts. You have the D3O armor system, which is included in this guy. That's molecular level armor. It's phase change armor. Impact hits the D3O armor, it's soft and pliable, the energy is disperses, the molecules lock together, and it becomes rigid, absorbing all of the energy. They measure shoulders, elbows, knees in joules of energy absorbed. Back protectors are CE rated level two. They're a little bit different. They measure newtons of energy transferred. So you're going to have the D3O armor in the elbows as well as the knees and the shoulder, actually as well as the hips as well it's included, and it is adjustable by an inch, it's a total of an inch of movement in the elbows as well as the knees. The other thing that's really, really cool about the Badlands Pro is going to be this Dow Corning deflection pad here. And what it is, it's a honeycomb pad that's about a half inch thick. And what it does is it allows for a ton of ventilation. It's very lightweight. It's pliable, but again, disperses shock across a honeycomb pattern evenly throughout the piece. And you'll notice the left side over the heart, it actually comes across so that it's in front of the sternum. And then if I pull this down a little bit further, notice I have a full zipper garage here too to make sure I keep water away from zippers, which are always a weak point. If I pull it this way, you're going to see the deflection on the right side of the chest as well. So again, protective features. This jacket also comes with the T5 level D3O armor system. It's actually the Viper armor system, which is the next generation D3O back pad. So unlike some other Enduro shells from Climb, this, this Badlands Pro is actually going to include armor with the purchase rather than having to upgrade or find it later. We found that in years past people have buying traverses which are typically an, an enduro style suit adding armor to them and even with the uh, Adventure Rally you can upgrade or you can buy the D3O armor pack put that in and, and take the place of having to wear a compression suit underneath it. A couple other features I want to talk about. I've talked about venting, I've talked about armor, talked about external materials, dry pockets. So you have weatherproof dry pockets here and here, you also have them down here. They're not hand warmer pockets, but they are dry pockets. And the other thing I want to talk about is inside this right side here, notice that we have this sleeve if you come in really, really tight. This jacket in the back, in the guts, has a three liter pocket for a hydration system. And the way that it's built, you can snake that hydration system through the garment, through the inside, and have the tip of it come out here. That way it doesn't get dirty. So you don't have to snake it over your shoulder or around the garment. Notice we have cinching on the arms to keep the armor in place. It's a great deal of cinching. You know, obviously, Freddie's a little bit thinner build than I am. I didn't have any issues with it. It was fine. Other thing, reflective. They're using the retro reflective from 3M. And the beauty of it is it's, it's 3M's next level of reflection. What it does is it reflects any light back directly to the source. So when you hit this guy with the light, it doesn't, it doesn't light up and glow like a Christmas tree. What it does is it, it reflects light directly back to the source. You can do a little test with, the, uh, with a LED flashlight and you know, holding it at different angles, you won't see the reflection. Holding it spot on, it'll come right back to you. Spin backwards for me, Freddie. Stop right there. So notice on the arm, we have more retro reflective with the Climb logos. Again, for the post-production model, this may or may not change with these yellow Climb logos here and there. Turn backwards for me. We showed the back with the big rabbit pocket. You can see the pad here that's built in, which is going to be that T5 D3O back pad, the Viper style. It has the grooves in it. It's their upgrade. Big reflective panel. And then you also have a cinch along the collar. Nothing's worse than the colder time of the year if you're not wearing a balaclava and you start to get wind down the back of your neck. The nice part about this guy is you'll be able to cinch it right in and go from there. And then we did talk about you have a full-size rabbit pouch down here for storage. 
turn back around for me. Now I do want to tell you that the Gore-Tex membrane, which is guaranteed for life and is breathable, allows you to sweat in this guy and the perspiration to come out through the outer shell, but it's going to keep you dry from all the elements. It is built in, it's built part of the membrane, it's not a, a standalone removable liner. That's actually one of the big selling points of a Gore-Tex shell like this, is that the waterproof element is built in. The nice part, I know the questions are coming from people, the pockets are all, I'm not going to call them dry pockets, they're weatherproof pockets, but they could get some condensation inside of them and that condensation could come from the sweat off of your body actually evaporating out through the Gore-Tex and getting into the pocket. So it is something you need to know. They're not completely waterproof, but they are completely weatherproof. It really depends on how much you sweat in this guy. If we open this pocket as well, there's another dry pocket that comes with it and there's a hook. So another Gore-Tex dry pocket and there's a hook that's going to be in here on each side that you can take your keys or attach your camera to. Let's move on to the pants for a second here. So as I move down here, God, you can stay where you are. Move down to the pants. You'll notice that again, it's going to be SPL 600. It's going to be it's going to be Gore-Tex Armacore in the backing, and then you have some other materials here as well. Stagger your legs for me. I want to show this Italian leather on the inside. So on the inside of the calves going up. It's a heat shield, it's perforated. The reason why the leather's perforated is because it has Gore-Tex behind it. Again, it's gonna allow perspiration to breathe out from it. The cut of these pants is an enduro style cut. So what that means is that you can have a full motocross knee brace that you would wear underneath in the knee. There's plenty of room in that knee box. And as well at the bottom, we have uh, Freddie here in a brand new pair of CD Adventure rain boots. He has plenty of room to get this cuff over. Turn completely backwards for me. I want to show the back of the cuff of the pants. And if you look, it's a three position system. So you have three snaps. You can cinch it up. You've got to open this guy up right here. And notice there's a gator. And what that gator does, that gator is going to keep any water from getting in there. It's a water resistant zipper. And then to be able to cinch it, it's not Velcro. Velcro sometimes can get tough down and around areas of high use. So what they have here is they have a snap system. But the circumference of the bottom of these pant legs is plenty big enough for an adventure rain, but also something like a city crossfire. So you can get a really, really gnarly, beefy motocross boot in here. Now while I have Freddy turned around, you're going to notice these two zippers on the back of his legs. They are zipper garages that have openings that are going to be the exit zips for the front zips. So turn away from me, Freddy. So face that way over there. I'm going to show on the side here, we have a full side, well that's the pocket, the full side zipper is actually over here. Where is it? There it is. It starts up there. And if I pull this guy down, you're going to see a huge zip that is in a very, very off-road style. And you can start to see the orange here. That's the D3 hip armor. But there's your intake on the front when you're riding. Whether you're standing, whether you're sitting, it's going to flow a ton of air. And then nothing's better for ventilation to have that passive, that Venturi vent that allows the airflow to come in and exit out the back. So now that we have Freddy out of the Badlands Pro, I want to break it down a little further here on the table. There's still a lot going on here. we we'll start with a couple components on the shell, then we're going to go into the guts, and then I'm going to go into the pants. So the first thing, I want to point out this pocket that, you know, Freddy's such a big dude, I couldn't reach around him when he had it on. This is a spot tracker pocket. Notice the shape of that. It's a unique shape. It's built for that purpose. Obviously, you can put something else in there, but really, this was designed as the spot tracker pocket because they know the hardcore off-road driven adventure guy that's out for exploration. Most of the time these days, the technology is cheap enough and it's good enough that there's no reason for you to not have that precaution. The other piece here is really unique to climb. I like this a lot. I think it's a nice, it's a nice creature comfort. This is called the personal stats pocket. And notice this symbol. This is the international medical alert symbol. So what this is, climbs actually when you buy this, and there's going to be more details released later in the year, there's going to be a way to register this jacket and get a custom personal stats element that you'd put in here that would basically have your information on it. And this little symbol would basically call attention to this pocket from an EMT or medical personnel of any nationality, depending on where you're riding around the world. You know, I also want to talk about, I'll show these a little further. It's a stretch storm cuff. And I'm not sure if we talked about it when we had it on Freddy, but look where the reflective is placed on the back side of this arm here. This is for waving. So this is to give you further reflective ability if you're in a situation where you need to flag someone down. So moving inside the garment now, Notice we have a D-ring down here. Moving inside, you're going to see you have adjusters along the bottom. The guts of this are pretty gnarly. One thing we didn't talk about when we had it on Freddy is that you have a full, just like the Adventure Rally, you have a full kidney belt with double adjustments that you have, and it's removable, and, it, and, it, and it, uh, it's, it's connected back here through this pocket, but you have a full kidney belt that lives within the jacket, if you can see the way that that's done. Also, as you get into the jacket, I talked about the three liter pouch that lives behind here that's going to snake around and come through this pocket. But you can see the dowel corning deflection coming really tight. You can get a good close up. 
on this deflection material and see it's really a half a quarter to a half inch thick it's got a honeycomb structure and it allows for a high degree of ventilation and notice how there's a larger pocket across the left breast that, cr that crosses over your sternum in the middle and you're going to have it on the right as well a good amount of cargo pockets as well as the headphone pockets here with headphone loops and then I talked about the D3O that's included. This is the new generation of D3O armor. I'm going to pull out the back pad and show it to you. This is molecular level armor. It comes standard. You don't have to upgrade to it. And it's just really, really gnarly stuff. This is the new T5 Viper style. Notice the aeration that's going to allow it to have good contact with your back from surface area, but allow it to flow air and create that pocket of air to help keep you cool. It's kind of, I don't know what it looks like to you guys, but it's a bit of an optical illusion even from where I'm standing. You're also going to have I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull one of the shoulders on this guy, the D3O armor pack that goes hips, shoulders, elbows, and knees, which is a nice touch. It's very comfortable, very pliable, and very protective. And again, it's all about in the shoulders, elbows, knees, and hips, energy absorption in joules, and then you get into the back protector, which measures how much tr energy does it actually transfer to your body. You can check that out. That is the right shoulder. Notice it's a basic mesh paneling on the inside. It's very comfortable against your skin. And one of the things that's nice, it's well thought out. Remember, this is a technical shell, so it's going to perform very well with base or mid layers that you have under it, depending on what you have in your closet. Move that guy over here briefly. Let's pull the pants over. I'm going to start on the pants with the brushed mesh finish, which again, for the pants, because it's going to be, maybe you just have a pair of boxer briefs on, they made this really soft brushed mesh, which is also wicking, that's going to be very comfortable. Notice that we have a 7-inch connection zipper on a stretch. There's a 7-inch connection zipper on a stretch in there. You have a yoke here, as well as yokes on the front for suspenders that are safety stitched. You can see the pocket here with a mesh around it that's built for the hip padding that comes standard. And as we move down, you can also see the rain fly over the crotch. Again, water's going to pull on your crotch if you're sitting on the bike. You want to have that extra backing behind. Even a water-resistant YKK zipper is not waterproof. So having that extra fly that's going to be Gore-Tex back is going to keep make sure that you stay dry. I talked about the perforated Italian leather for, from a heat and abrasion shield on the inside of the legs. And then the last thing I want to get into here, I want to turn one of these guys inside out. And remember, you have upgraded snaps, you have YKK zippers, you have the gaiters on the bottoms, but what I want to do here is I want to show that it's not a mesh material that's going to go over your boot. If these were mesh, if this, if this external fabric did not come around and wrap and come up, what you'd run into is your pant legs getting worn away from the inside out, which is very common when you get into a heavy buckle situation on the inside with a, with a, uh, a pant cuff over it. And notice even the little details here. These are little drains, so if any water gets passed or gets inside up your pant legs, you have these drain holes that are double stitched that allow it to drain out. So remember, this is a prototype still. Some of the logos can change. Some of the elements may change slightly. Um, we're not quite sure about price, but we can safely say it's probably going to be north of $800 for the jacket and somewhere probably north of $500 for the pair of pants. So you have basically one half step down from the Adventure Rally. It's a modular, component-driven, technical shell, off-road oriented, but that does enough things and will be comfortable enough to cross over depending on the base layers. It's four season, it's Gore-Tex, it's guaranteed for life. If you have any questions about it, there's anything we didn't cover today because we basically told you everything that we know at this point, call us, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. It's going to come in silver gray. It's also going to come in a full black option. The size ranges have, left to be, have been left to be determined, but we do know that there's going to be tall versions of the pants. Again, so this is the Badlands Pro, new. It's going to be available, we're told, somewhere around August 2011. This is our first look at this prototype on RevZilla TV. You can find any other information on RevZilla.com slash climb or on our YouTube channel or on our blog.RevZilla.com. I'm Anthony. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time.